you guys remember the top 10 most disliked IGN reviews of all time? Well, now we have the top 10 most disliked GameSpot reviews of all time. It's probably the same. But it's this guy again. What are the top 10 most hated GameSpot reviews? Was it this guy British or something? Extremely. It's a game with guns. What on earth is she blathering about? <laughs> Why should GameSpot, the Tweedledee to IGN's Tweedledum? GameSpot has had its fair share of blunders over the years. This one still blows my mind. The fact that this guy was like, no, this game is not very good. They're like, yo, get that guy the fuck out of here. What game was it? Wait, you guys don't know the story? This is a guy named Jeff Gerstman. So on GameSpot, they had a bunch of uh, ads all over their site. They had ads all over for Kane and Lynch. And the Kane and Lynch game got like a three or four out of ten. This guy reviewed the Kane and Lynch game. So you would go on the site, it would have the Kane and Lynch banner ad on the review that said this game was uh, poor. So they fired him. They're like, oh, my bad, Kane and Lynch. We'll get rid of that fucking guy. This was a time when GameSpot had like semi reliable reviews too. Yeah, it's weird that like when I was growing up, I wanted to be a game reviewer really bad. But I'm really glad that I landed in this space because now I like you guys know what I do and don't like. So I hope that you guys can appreciate like when I say something is good or bad, you guys can hear it through a single source. Like Dunkey has that video about it. What a shit dream. I thought it would be really cool to review games for a living, you know? I think being able to rely on individuals and hear their perspective is really valuable. I'm a game reviewer and more. See, that's all I'm saying. I could be anything. I could be a reactioner. Watch this. First off at number 10, with 5.1 thousand dislikes, we have their review of Alien Isolation. Now, they did rate it higher than IGN's 5.9. Holy! True, by the way. I hate this game. But Don't like this game. But only by 0.1, rounding their review up to a nice and even <laughs> 6 out. I did not know reviewers were this based. Didn't you get lost in the tutorial? Yes! I played Alien Isolation for an hour, and I couldn't find a way around an area, and I was like, this sucks. I don't want to play it anymore. I didn't play this game, but you want to know why I didn't keep going? How long do you think the perfect horror game is? Eight hours, 12 hours, nine hours, six hours. Pretty short, right? You don't think it should be crazy long because by a certain point, you're going to sort of get the tricks of the game. You're going to know how it functions. It'll get less scary. Alien Isolation is 18 hours. Would you still have fun playing this game? Oh, no. And that's facts. Especially when so much of it is going to be crawling or stealthing around. I don't know. This is a game people like but don't finish. Then you didn't like it. Coney plays 30 minutes of a game and complains how long it is. Kind of. I played 30 minutes of the game and I was like, dude, this is not intuitive and it's annoying. And then I looked up how long it was and I, I just, I got out immediately. And then I hear people say it's one of the scariest games ever made. People say it's really good because it's unpredictable. I hear it's a great game. I hate it and I'll never play it. GameSpot was spitting. It seems that much like IGN's review, GameSpot got someone to review a game from Could a genre two review that they sites don't really be wrong? enjoy or even understand. Okay, so, that's kind of shitty. Going in a score that boggles the mind. The graphics and art direction are probably the game's greatest feature. He doesn't mention the crafting system or just how good the peak mechanic is. The peak mechanic? I agree with the graphics being good. It, it, the graphics are good, but... The peak mechanic, bro? I do love the art direction. I think it's cool. I like this, like old monitor CRT kind of deal. I do dig that. I mean, it still is one of the best first-person survival horror games you can play today. Wrong. Game sucks. This dude sounds mad. That's why I love these videos. I love the idea of a YouTube channel talking about the 10 most disliked GameSpot reviews and being on the side of the gamers and hating the reviewers. I, these are amazing. Because sometimes the gamers are wrong. I love that. Coming in at number nine is their review of Mad Max with 5.7 thousand dislikes. Scoring I heard this Mad game Max was actually pretty good. This game sucked so ass, did it? I heard this game was pretty good. But it's when you get out of the car that things begin to fall apart. The combat system oh, it's is Bam too dumbed down to enjoy. Dude, it's literally Bam Ham. So he criticizes the Arkham Asylum-like combat, calling it repetitive and too dumbed down to enjoy. I love Bam Ham. Which I mostly disagree with. I mean, there is a certain repetitiveness about Arkham's combat system, but nothing has come along to top it yet. No, Arkham it's great. Arkham Asylum is 15 years Bam old. Bam Ham is year, awesome. Some of the current best selling games. Oh, get his ass, Harry! Wait, Bam Ham. Harry Potter is Bam Ham? Is that real? My wife beat this game. Is my wife a gamer? That's crazy. Good for her. What the fuck is Bam Ham? Oh, I, I'm so glad you asked. Bam Ham. Yum. <laughs>
Ham Ham, a death in the Hamily. <laughs> Very good. Bam Ham Combat is like mashing X, and then a guy goes, oh, and then you hit Y. It sounds stupid. It's so fun. Bam Ham Combat, like Spider-Man is Bam Ham. It's so fun. It's helpful that you can carry multiple cars worth of metal on your person, but it doesn't make much sense. Yet, carrying more items than your character should realistically be able to is apparently a problem now. Uh... Forgive me, but isn't that every game ever? From Mario collecting coins to Link carrying multiple weapons shield. The gamer is spitting on this one. The gamer is spitting. Reviewer, you're in the wrong here. In GameSpot's follow-up I mean... video titled Why Mad Max Got a 6 Out of 10, he defends some of the points he made in the review. You can carry too much stuff, so like, yeah, right. talk about that. So everything that you purchase, you purchase. Oh, did with... you? <laughs> I didn't know GameSpot does this. If GameSpot has a controversial review, they'll take the review and be like, okay, sit the fuck down. You need to explain why you did that. They, they just rake them over the coals for the gamers. Can you do this with only one here? If I ever find out who only one here is, I will personally fly him to a studio over here and conduct a three-hour interview. I want to do a full documentary on that guy. Just go into his most controversial reviews, have deep, meaningful conversations. What's it like being a gaming grandpa? Uh, you spend a lot of time in your car. Uh, there is the option to fast travel, which I think is bullshit in a Mad Max game. Another ridiculous statement. Anyone who's played the game knows Mad Max's open world is massive, and taking out fast travel would create a huge, unnecessary grind that wouldn't be fun for anybody. No, I can kind of understand the complaint about, like, why isn't it more fun to traverse? But then again, I also don't think there's a way to do that. I don't fast travel in Spider-Man. That's always the one that people bring up. They're like, well, Spider-Man, you don't fast travel, but that's because it's fucking Spider-Man. You know what I mean? Like, the map is small. It's New York. If your car game isn't fun to drive in, I get his criticism. Yeah, that's kind of, I don't know. I, I don't know how you fix that problem, but I kind of get it. I really have to ask people, if you're playing a Mad Max game, which is built around car combat, and there is a main antagonist, do you not expect that you were going to enter into car combat with that antagonist? I probably would. I just want yeah. people to think critically about this because while sure. I may have no, given he's, away okay. an he's element right. that happened he's in the right. story, he's right. if you were surprised, I'm sorry. <laughs> I get oh, it. So it's our fault for not expecting final end game boss fights to be spoiled in his four minute review. I mean, you wouldn't have expected it to be a final end game boss fight gamer. The gamer's wrong on this one. I don't think he's the knob on this one. The gamer's wrong. I'll tell you when GameSpot is wrong. The gamer's wrong this time. Ghost of Tsushima Hold on. with 7.3 thousand dislikes. You know what's crazy? I see people praise the shit out of this game. When I played it and when I saw reviews, everybody gave it a 7. I thought it was a 7. It felt like a 7 to me. It's not quite a Criterion classic, but a lot of the time, it sure looks like one. It's a 7. Now, yes! Want... Yes! They were spinning! Yes! You know what the problem is? Any game like this is not Sekiro. And I, I like, it sounds so reductive and stupid, but it's literally true. It's done. Like, you can't make one of these games now. That is the best version of that game. People don't respect the Journeyman Workhorse 7 out of 10s anymore. No one appreciates a good 7 out of 10 more than me. I played Evil West. I played uh, Atomic Heart. Rise of Ronin is a 7 out of 10. Yes, Rise of Ronin is a bad 7. Ghost of Tsushima is an amazing 7. Exactly. They are the same thing. I'm telling you, 7 out of 10 is good, it's just exactly what it said. Robocop, 7 out of 10 game. The humble 7 out of 10 game it, uh, it occupies a very uh, honorable space in the gaming, uh, the, 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 the gaming ecosystem. It's good. Oh, and when he said, at times, it almost feels as if the art direction is trying a little bit too hard to draw attention to itself. <laughs> Most people just click the dislike button and left. All right, Overall, that's a little not weird. Not a bad review, just a confusing score. Which the game tries to be beautiful. Nuggets. What kind of try-hard bullshit is this? The game's trying to be pretty. That is very only one here. 11,000 dislikes, which doesn't follow the normal video review format at all. The reviewer and the host talk for 20 minutes like it's a podcast, and give the game a 5 out of 10. Jeez! It, you have to go through a lot of hours of not so great, but pretty much every infestation zone is like the same. And it's really underscored by the fact that Deacon says the same things at every single one. Oh, I smell a nest. The developers put that dialogue in there because the nests are easily missable if you're not looking for them, and are oh. important to burn down because they open up fast traveling routes. Okay, well that's... Okay, well then you kind of do need that. Damn, this guy plays games. He understands it. No, they aren't. He is wrong. Wait, really? Wait, I don't know who to believe. 
Really? Are you sure? Uh, which one is real here? Everybody in this game exists to serve Deacon's wants, Deacon's needs, Deacon's progression. Wow, it's almost like this Deacon guy's the main character or something. Like with the, the Newt's example. Deacon, you know, he's been killing Newt's the whole game, or you've been killing Newt's. I found it uncomfortable. Do a lot of not very great things, but they're all presented as the right thing to do. Deacon never reflects back on that. It's a third person shooter. Oh, they're doing Uncharted stuff. Shooter okay. Set in a zombie apocalypse. Believe it or not, most of us don't want to reflect on the morality of the decisions we make in a zombie game. Ah, that's why, that, and that's why we made Last of Us. And when you kill a guy in Last of Us 2, they go, Tyler, no! GameSpot unironically spitting. No, I mean, you can have a dumb B-movie bullshit game like this, like a butt rock game, which is what this feels like. And then you can have Last of Us 2, which is some uh, Martin Scorsese Oscar bait bullshit. You can have both. This guy's pretending to care about Days Gone. That's what I'm saying. This game was never going to be good. Come on. To play out of context hmm. okay. is the wedding scene. As if this one scene conclusively proved Days Gone had terrible writing. But only if you promise to ride me as much as you ride your bike. But what they fail to mention is the flashback scene where Sarah says this. On two conditions. Name them. Okay, well, the first one is that we don't have one of those biker weddings. Guys, you see? You're gonna ride me as much as you're riding. See? It's, it, somebody in my chat told me this. Somebody in my chat told me this. It was out of context. The wedding scene makes sense. That's why she said it. It makes sense that it's actually good writing because it's a callback. That makes it really good. Automatically good. Which shows the writers were fully aware that the wedding scene dialogue was cringe. <laughs> and it was just a way to convey that Sarah accepts both the good and bad side of D. Does he ever take the hat off? I just realized, does he? Does his model have that fully affixed to his head? It's just like you. You can't make that joke now. You can't make that joke right now. You literally can't do it. I was just way, never interested. People thought he deserved the highest. I was so sick and of zombie games at, PC, this, at this, this point, man. Received nothing but good feedback, with 92% of its 52,000 user reviews being positive, Whatever. which isn't bad for a game. Gamespot only gave a five out of ten. A score like a their five Alien feels Isolation a little low. review we go could six. help ensure that a sequel may never see the light of day. We go it's six. Gone. At number five, we have a tie between The Last of Us and Grand Theft Auto V. So Ellie's a standout, the rest of the characters lack hearts. And easy puzzles fail to engage your wits. <laughs> Joel pushing a dumpster. I can't think of any puzzles in The Last of Us other than swimming with the, with the raft. That's all I could think of. I thought the characters were pretty... I don't remember them too much, but I thought Bill was good, and then the dad and the kid. Um, the kid that turns into a zombie. Dude, and I fucking love the cult leader, actually. The guy that you fight in the steakhouse, that's one of my favorite, like, moments in a game in the past, like, 20 years. That steakhouse fight with Ellie is so fucking good. They're wrong. The gamer's right on this one. Wait, but they gave it an 8. And <laughs> they're mad at the 8. Uh, I mean, that's just gamer shit. I would have said nine, but I get it. The Last of Us creates rules, such as sound drawing the attention of zombies. But your friends speak loudly or stand in the open while remaining undetected. I remember when this was happening, because your character would, like, go into a space and be like, all right, we got to be really quiet. The clickers can't see anything, but they can hear. And then Ellie's like, what'd you say, Joel? What'd you say? What happened over there? Hello, Joel? Joel, where's the zombies? Opening a door lets you pass safely to a new area, while the zombies passively look on. <laughs> None of these elements are yeah, really fun. I mean, but they do diminish your immersion. Yeah, but this shit came out in 2013. We hadn't done that yet. He gave the game. We have figured that out at this point. Every you know what I'm saying? Critic giving the game a perfect score. I'm sure any hardcore fan of The Last of Us who happened across this review at the time left a dislike. Okay, no way we're caring about the review score of Cheat Code Central. I used this shit when I was a teenager. They gave it an 8. We don't need to fucking... Okay. Did Grand we do Death the same thing to GTA? Review, which they gave a 9, with their only criticism being, well... Have a listen. Perhaps you start by digging deep into the game's story problems or its serious issues with women. On the other hand, it's deeply frustrating that its world has little room for women except to portray them as strippers, prostitutes, long suffering wives, humorless girlfriends, and goofy new age feminists we're meant to laugh at. Is that a fair criticism? I don't know. In GTA, well, no, because because everybody's a piece of shit in GTA. Everybody's an asshole. Except Franklin. Like, I think Franklin is the one character in the game that you're supposed to be like, oh, this guy's normal. 
So I think everybody is supposed to be disliked. So I kind of understand why the women are also assholes. So I kind of get that, but also, could we have like a girl Franklin? Could we not have one, you know? Maybe that's why in GTA 6, yeah, we have a nor we have a pro tag woman or whatever. Just to be clear, I don't have the answer. I'm trying to think of this critically myself because I do think that th this might have been uh, maybe too, too fine a point on this criticism back in 2013. Um, but I do understand it, you know? But let's see what the controversy is. As you could probably sure. tell, this review had a healthy dose of feminist frequency, fun-killing nonsense. Sexism <laughs> in gaming. And though this is becoming oh, the norm oh. oh. nowadays, oh. 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 projecting one's own personal beliefs onto a video game, especially the biggest video game franchise of all time, was enough for everyone interested in actually playing GTA 5 to dislike the review. I don't know. Let's engage with our media a little bit more critically. Please think critically. People think too critically about this game. <laughs> Where is the line between games and art? We really got to define this. Is this art? Is this something that we can actually think about through a critical lens that we can discuss as as a matter of the, the current culture and, and the current zeitgeist at the time? Or, or is it just I turn on the game and I shoot people in the head? It's art, but I refuse to discuss it. SpongeBob SquarePants Battle for Bikini Bottom Rehydrated takes third place. <laughs> okay. Oh, yeah, this shit got like a four, right? How is it possible for a remake of a PlayStation 2 SpongeBob game to rank so high up on another bad video game review list? Bro, because it's the nostalgia. People are like, wait, no, it was good when I played it. In one section of the puzzle, all you need to do is stand on- Oh, wait, never mind. <laughs> I remember this. In one section of the puzzle, all you need to do is stand on a button, and that button opens a gate for you to bowl a bubble into so you can progress. The only problem is that during SpongeBob's wind-up animation for bowling, he walks forward. That means you fall off of the button, which closes the gate and prevents you from bowling the bubble where you intended, when you intended. What the fuck do I do? How do I do this? Try standing a little bit further back. It's a simple task and concept, but trying to execute it is some of the most unfun and Sisyphean gameplay. What the hell is even that? <laughs> okay, the gamers are right on this one. I think GameSpot has to take the L on that one. That's my bad. He <laughs> said it was Sisyphean, bro. There were multiple points in the game where I climbed up to the top of a high structure and a rogue robot knocked me all the way down into the water. Ironically, none of the protagonists can swim, so I instantly died and respawned at a checkpoint. Having to start all over is truly deflating. I mean, that shit is annoying, but that's just old game shit, you know what I mean? But the game also randomly blocks paths with invisible walls, rendering your attempt to get there useless and telling you that your solution isn't right. Walking into those walls Whoa. feels like a slap in the face just for thinking creatively. Okay, this guy only played Mario Odyssey. <laughs> Mario Odyssey is a, is a marvel, because if you go somewhere you're not supposed to go, the game gives you coins. It's like, damn, that was kind of nice. You're not supposed to go this way, but good job. It's a game so focused on emulating and embellishing the original that it doesn't know the parts of itself that are fun and the parts that aren't. This game doesn't promote curious or keen gameplay. The movement isn't smooth, and gathering collectibles never feels rewarding. Okay, this, yeah, this guy's wrong about this. I did play this game. It wasn't good, but it was fine. Ultimately, sorry the to game tell winds you. up being an unpleasant right. nostalgia trip that nobody should pack. Holy! <laughs> oh my god! Kill that reviewer now! I didn't know it got a two! A two? That game is a six. And if you played it when it came out, it's an eight. For me, it was a six. It was fine. Our number two slot goes to their Cyberpunk 2077 review with 32,000 dislikes. Did they say it was good or bad? Were they like, this game is great and then nobody could play it, so they said it was bad? Or they said, this game sucks, and then all the CD Projekt Red dirts were like, no, uh <laughs> Our experience, the bugs are obtrusive and substantial across the ah, board, okay. often forcing us to reload saves. Or the gamers love CD Projekt Red, and I don't understand why. So much of it is superficial set dressing, and there's so much happening all around you, like ads going off at all times, gunfights breaking out in the streets, texts coming in about cars you'll never buy, that a lot of the game feels superfluous. Okay, I will say, the characters calling me once a fucking minute was very funny. Like, you would leave a building and you would get four phone calls. Just, hey, you gotta come over to my shop. I got something for you. Bye. 
Hey, I got you. You got to kill this guy across town. Why don't you go over there and get something done, Choom? I got a new car for you. Stop by my garage. It's very gamey. You could put the dislikes down to another case of fanboys gone wild. But what caused Damn, all the controversy he's on GameStop for GameSpot side. is they had the same brilliant idea that they had with Mad Max. They made a review discussion video. Here's just a couple <laughs> of excerpts. From They're just farming content. They're milking this. Help the cops catch these criminals. And I was like, what if I don't want to help the cops? And then I would just drive away. And like, I, I didn't do a single one of them because right. I just didn't see the points. As you could probably tell, this gave people all the ammunition they needed to completely discredit GameSpot 7 out of 10. And with comments like that, who can argue? So that video blew up, resulting in GameSpot uh, turning off the comments on both their damn. Cyberpunk videos and waiting for everything to blow over. Problem is, Cyberpunk absolutely deserved a score like that. Maybe not for the same reason stated in GameSpot's review, but for plenty of others. I mean, it wasn't a 9 or 10 out of 10 game. Not in a million years. I mean, it was an absolutely disastrous <laughs> launch. And the game basically became a glorified ray tracing benchmark tool. Uh, but when GameSpot allowed people to review a game they clearly have no interest in playing, everybody loses. I would argue that's the game's fault for not making it more engaging in those ways. Like I played through the Fallout, I played through Fallout 4, and I didn't want to build a settlement ever. I don't think that that means I don't want to play Fallout 4. I just don't want to engage in this bullshit crafting stuff. So if like she doesn't want to play the 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 melee combat section or do whatever the cops are doing for a stupid side quest, you know? That's more on the game's fault, I think. She didn't say she didn't want to engage with the game, she said she didn't see the point. Well, yeah, I feel like the cop stuff is just like, they're probably emergent quests, where it's like there's a bank robbery going on and the cops are like, hey, help us! It's like, what? Why? <laughs> a reviewer has a responsibility to engage with what they're reviewing to make a fair judgment. Yeah, but you can't review the, in I don't think you have to review the entire game as a whole. If something isn't engaging to you, I don't think you do it. Especially if the game is this dense. So then the review is inaccurate? No, because then, because, because if it's not a major part of the game, like that, that punching side quest is like specifically if you want to go into a melee build or like if you're interested in doing melee stuff. That's not the game specific. You know what I mean? Coney trying to review Final Fantasy 15, but he didn't fish for ten hours. Yeah, I don't play fishing games. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't think that's. You know? Okay, we made it. Number one. <laughs> oh, I know what this is. Oh, I know what this is. Most of us know why this review got so many dislikes. <laughs> and if you don't, get ready for a phrase so cringy that it created a gaming meme more powerful than IGN's too much water. A child of a black father and Puerto Rican mother, Miles is a wonderful mixture of cultures and languages. The way he leaps off of rooftops and flips backwards to face the camera before falling into a headfirst dive is just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. He's just full of the exaggerated swagger of a black teen. Okay, okay, wait. The writer was black. The guy who read the line was not, he was white. That might have been a miscalculation. Is it that bad of a line to to write though? If the writer is a black dude and he is happy to, to be represented in this way, in a way that he sees as being credible, as a way that he thinks is a good representation of him as a teen or his experiences, is he not allowed to convey that information? I'm not saying it's not cringy. The point is that it is his personal subjective experience. Can we not appreciate that? Based on his experience, maybe he lived through life and had that exaggerated swagger of a black teen. Maybe he was he was a black teen once, the writer is black, right? Maybe you shouldn't have a white guy read it, but I don't I'm not gonna make fun of this guy for for feeling well represented in the Spider-Man game. What if he didn't have the exaggerated swagger of a black teen? What if he felt like Peter Parker? You'd be making more fun of him. Now he didn't need to say it like this, I think. <laughs> but I get it. You know? And touch this blessed individual, for he was the one to spread the word. The one who would condense GameSpot into a single meme bro. to alien isolation. Sleep well, sweet prince, for no, they can I, hurt you no longer. Bro, I don't think this line was that bad. I gotta say it. I'm gonna keep it $100. I don't think this line was that bad. That's a, that's a fun movie. Good movie. I think GameSpot was right most of the time, though. I think the gamers were wrong, if I'm being $100.